Hi everyone and welcome to this video about samples versus population in psychological research. So the key idea covered here is that kind of broad umbrella statement talking about um, the different types of um, data and how they're represented. So the areas of learning we're covering here is um, talking about drawing conclusions from researchers, from research using particular samples and also generalising findings to wider populations. So a population is basically the entire group of research interest from which a sample is drawn. So it's never going to be the entire population of all people everywhere who ever existed in every country, but it's that particular um, I guess that subset, that research interest that you're talking about. So it could be um, all teenagers living in Adelaide or it could be um, all Australians, you know, that would be a, a massive study to try and generalise to. But that's our population. Now our sample on the other hand is much smaller and it's a subsection um, of people from that population. Okay, so you've got this massive population, let's pretend that it's all teenagers in Adelaide and you're going to get a sample of teenagers in Adelaide to use in your research study. So you can see here that you've got this large, this large population here okay, and we're going just to use a, a small sample of them over here. Now you can see that there are, I guess, some colours or some colour-coded people within this population. Um, some are blue, some are green, some are brown. And you can see that that sample has a good distribution of kind of one of each of those people. Now that will come in handy later, so keep thinking about why that might be useful. Okay, so with a sample, when you're conducting research, it has to be a random sample of the population. So if we were doing all teens in Adelaide, I couldn't just go to the top school in the state, pick the 10 top students from that top school and say that that's my sample for all of teens in Adelaide. You know, that's not going to be right, it's not random, it doesn't reflect that entire population. If we were researching um, something about academic success, you're only getting, you know, the, the cream of the crop and the cream of that crop as well. You're only getting a particular type of person there. So you need to make sure that you are randomly sampling from the population. Okay? And in this case, the larger the sample, the better, okay? because it's more likely to re um, reflect that population. Now, an unrepresentative sample is a phrase that you need to be using throughout the course. Now, this is a sample that doesn't represent that population. It could be that that sample is too small. Like if you're using um, your population as all teens in Adelaide and you only get 10 participants, that's really, it, it doesn't, it couldn't possibly represent um, that, that population, okay? Um, it could also be unrepresentative because it's biased. So it could be that you've picked all females or all males or people aged 10 to 12 or um, people from a very affluent suburb or people from a particular school in a certain area or it could be that you've only chosen a certain culture. Okay. Now these unrepresentative samples, they lack that validity because they're not measuring what they're supposed to measure. They're not accurately testing that hypothesis because they've got the wrong people. You're not going to get results that really answer your question. Okay, so using a small or unrepresentative sample, it really doesn't reflect that population. And so when you're reflecting on the results, you can't generalise those findings to the wider population. Here is a bit of a comic to illustrate this. So there's two penguins talking here and he says 99% of people surveyed were lonely and wanted someone to talk to. And the guy's saying, well, yes. He said they're the only people who would respond to telephone surveys. You know, those who are not lonely and who don't want someone to talk to, they're probably either not going to answer the phone because they're not home or they're going to hang up on you. Okay. All right, so I want you to think about this scenario because you're going to need to be able to respond to these kind of scenarios throughout the year. So there is a dream nappy st study. So I've come up with my own company and I've called it dream nappies and we conducted a study. Now we kind of obtained data 
through a short subjective quantitative questionnaire. Okay, so basically they rated their favorite shampoos on a scale of one to 10. All right, and we could see which ones they preferred based on those, the, the ratings. Okay, the survey was located on the Dream Nappies website. So the only way that we could collect data was if people went to our website, clicked on take the survey and completed it that way. Now our results, we found that 95% of participants rated Dream Nappies as their favorite brand. Okay. And what happened next is that at my company, Dream Nappies, we reported that 95% uh, of all parents, all parents rate Dream Nappies as their preferred nappy brand. Now I want you to pause the video here and jot down a couple of notes as to what could be wrong with this scenario and try and relate it to the information we've been covering so far. So why is the sample unrepresentative? And why is it inappropriate to generalize the findings to the wider population of all parents? Okay, have a look at your notes. Um, just read through them and try and jot down a few more ideas. So this brings us to the end of the video. Keep your notes. You'll need them when we go through this in class. And if you want any more information, feel free to ask me lots of questions or see these resources. See you in class.